are you this evening? Good, good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Oh, my God. This is a really pleasure having you. Oh, thank you. Now, now where are you at at the moment? At the moment, I'm in Atlanta. Okay, Atlanta. And you are from Texas, right? Or Tennessee? Originally from Texas, yes, but I live in Tennessee up in Nashville. I'm by Nashville. Yeah, I always yeah. see your post. What's with John Ford Cooley and a pie? <laughs> you always post a pie. <laughs> you know, it's something to talk about besides politics. If you can argue about pie, you don't really have a whole lot going for you. So I don't even want to talk to them. Clearly. <laughs> anyway, Sir John, this is at the Blada TV and welcome to my show. I have Thank my you so much. I have 10 questions for you. So I'm going to go ahead and go through that questions. Okay. I've got, I've only got seven answers. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have fun. And I love those awards beside, uh, behind you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's the only place in my room that actually has space that I can set up. So <laughs> anyway, Sir John, so how are you these days during the pandemic? What have you uh, been up to? You know, I'm not having any difficulty with the pandemic other than the fact that they're not letting us work. Mm -hmm. um, what happened, I've, I've studied uh, alternative medicine for a very, very long time. So I know how to build up my immune system. Uh -huh. And the one thing that they're not telling anyone how to do is to build up their immune system. They're just saying be afraid of everyone and everything. And it's, no, you build up your immune system, you're going to be fine. Okay. Yeah. Right? unique voice you have a very very great voice sir john i've been listening okay. to your songs just right now and you know so and a lot of viewers and filipino viewers are, did you come from an artistic family or a musical family you know my mom and dad sang in the choir other than that there was no musical you know people in that really? in the church choir and i was trained classically and uh -huh. listened to music all my life my mom and dad were very musical uh -huh, they uh -huh. just didn't, um, they, they just never did anything professionally. So you're in the family, in the family tree, you're the only Grammy Award winner. That's it. So that you're I'm the, the only, leader. I'm the only <laughs> one. And even my children, uh -huh. none of my children picked it up. No. So no kidding. None of them. What about instruments? No instruments? No, no instruments. instruments. My daughter, my daughter tried to play guitar. Uh -huh. And finally went, yeah, you know, I'd rather go bowling. So <laughs> what do you do? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so anyways, who discovered John Ford Cooley? Did you audition? Did you pass some tapes? <laughs> tapes. Actually, I had, um, I went to high school and there was a band in school called Playboy Spy. Mm -hmm. And so the guitar, one of the guitar players quit. Everybody wanted a keyboard player except Dan. Dan Seals, England Dan, was oh. in that group. He was the saxophone player. He wanted another guitar player, uh -huh. but everybody else wanted to get the piano player. I ended up winning out, and uh, that's pretty much how it happened for me. It just kind of went from there. Oh, wow. So uh, did you pass some tapes to the recording studios, or did you, the demos that you have, did you um, uh, just gave it to radio station or something? No, when, when I first began, I didn't have any of that. We didn't even have it, demos at all. And so I would just went and I played the piano, you know, when they played some of the songs, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, they, they I, I didn't know what I was doing. And mm -hmm. one time I remember Dan said, John, you play the music. I'll sing the melody. Don't play the melody. And I went, oh, is that has, okay, sure. You know, and so that's pretty so, much how it happened. So, Sir John, did you compose your songs or do you have a, you have a lyricist? No, I do most of it myself or I work with other people. Occasionally I'll write with somebody else. Wow. 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 Anyway, Sir John, tell me about your best performance on stage. Best so, performance, I, I think it was... You know, I had so many of them. I had some really key moments. I'm we opened up for sure. Carol King. Oh yeah, I mean, it was it was a lot of fun because again, it was all new. Mm -hmm. So we opened up for Carol King. We opened up for Elton John, um, for Bread, Chicago, Three Dog Night. All of those I considered just some of my best concerts because we got to play with so many great people. Oh wow. What about your worst experience on stage? You know, or embarrassing. 
You know, honestly, I, I have not really had any of those. I mean, I've had nights to where I couldn't do anything right. I remember one night I, I played in, um, in State College, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I was having a horrible night. I couldn't do anything right. So I started playing Soldier in the Rain and I messed up all over the place. My fingers would not work. And I stepped back. I just stopped playing and I stepped back and at the top of my lungs, I yelled out, Satan, get the hell out of here now. <laughs> After that, everything was fine. You know, and the audience laughed because again, it's like, oh my goodness, he's crazy. <laughs> so that, that was one that I remember very well. <laughs> okay, so just, that's funny. <laughs> I'll remember that Satan, get the fuck out of my <laughs> Yeah, get out. Yeah, leave me alone. Nobody invited you here. Go away. Okay, Sir John. What's the weirdest a fan did to you? The weirdest that a fan did to me, one time I was down in Montgomery, Alabama. And so after the show was over, I was selling merchandise my kids were there and i was just signing autographs they were selling the things and this one guy said you remember me uh -huh. and i went no i'm i'm sorry i don't and he goes you don't remember me and i went no i'm, I'm sorry i don't you don't remember me and i went i'm i'm really sorry i I'm, i don't you know people change and he goes that's what i thought and he stormed off and i went what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cuckoo there. <laughs> in front of my kids, and my kids are looking at him like, okay, this guy doesn't have both oars in the water, Dad. You need you need to leave him. I mean, you have, you have fun things like that. Oh my gosh. What do you what's your opinion about the 80s music and the now music? The 80s oh, I music? The 80s. <laughs> well, 80s, I mean, they had a lot of good stuff. You know, there was a lot of good people that came through there. And then there was melody still. You know, you, you, had, um, you had people like, uh, gosh, who, who was there? Uh, Rupert Holmes. And, you know, with, there was a lot of melody still. Mm -hmm. And so, and, the, and Van Halen, you know, you had groups like that. Now, there's no melody. I mean, I, I used to be able to sing with them. That's it. I, <laughs> and that's already music. It. <laughs> no, and uh, I do not like rap music. I mean, I like I like melodies. I like harmonies. I like things that are that are uh, something that I can sing along to. Mm -hmm. You know, and now and it was at that time it was about the song. The group kind of played right. in there. There's a heart about in the there. song. Mm -hmm. Now it's all about the artist. You know, and when they sing, it's like, la, 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 la. and you go, I can't <laughs> sing. Now. It's all about you. You understand the lyrics. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, and I laugh because I live in Nashville. So, you know, we make fun of the country music here because, again, we used to have stories. Oh, my and Now God. it's all about uh, drinking and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, whiskey and trucks and, <laughs> and hi, girl. And it's like, what happened to your imagination? You know, <laughs> tell me a story. Tell me something that went on, you know. It's, oh, my God. It's just, it's just different. That's all. It is totally different right now from the 80s and 70s music. I love, actually, I love 50s music. <laughs> you know something? I love doo -wop. I absolutely fall in love with, with doo -wop every time I hear it. And it's like people like the Beach Boys. You know, they were one of the first groups that combined pop rock music with doo -wop. And it was just so, That's true. so appealing. <laughs> That's you know? true. So, Sir John, if it wasn't for a music career, what would, what do you think you're doing right now? Well, uh, I think probably I'm selling that. Pie, right? huh? <laughs> Not selling pie, right? Huh? Not selling pie, right? No, no, I, I, I would be on a pie company. You know, probably if I uh, every, every step of the way, you know, you you think, okay, if I if I got out of school, I probably would have been a teacher or a lawyer. I really wanted to go to med school. I didn't do that. I mean, if I wasn't in music now, I'd probably be running guns across the border. That seems to be very lucrative, you know? I'm, I'm joking, that's a joke. <laughs> um, you know, I really, 
I've always done music, so I've never really given it that that much thought. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh wow. Yeah. I've done a lot of jobs. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God yeah. that you you're into music because we wouldn't have one of the greatest singer in the world. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, what are your plans this coming months or years? Do you have any like composition coming out, songs coming out? I actually songs are just. Done? We, <laughs> we actually just released a brand new album. Uh -huh. It's a download. It's the first one that we didn't put on CD. And my friend Tom Worth, who's the producer on a lot of the things that I've done, he came over one day and uh, I was just listening to old songs. And I said, Tom, what do you think of this? And I played it. And he said, wow. He said, I like that a lot. What are you doing with it? And I said, it's just a demo. Nothing. And I said, what about this one? And I played another one for him. And he said, what are you doing with these? And I said, they're all demos just sitting in the drawer. And he said, you need to release these. Oh. So we thought about it, put together 10 songs of, you know, ones that I had done for films, ones that you're just recording, hope that somebody else will end up recording the song, mm -hmm. put it together. It's called Sketches Volume 1. Sketches. We're going to have a, a volume two. They're just demos. But otherwise, you're just going to sit in the drawer. Oh. So if you go to my website, johnfordcoley.com, mm -hmm. You can go in the store and you can you can oh, see these. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I, I've had so much fun with this because again, it's a little bit different for me, oh, you know. It's but uh, yeah, it's so called sketch. Uh -huh. ah, so is it out on Spotify or Amazon or Apple Play? Not yet, not, not yet. yet. We're sending everybody to the website right now, mm -hmm. uh, the John Ford Cody dot com website we'll put it on amazon and the other things later on but after this interview i'm gonna go straight to your website seriously no, I, I think you'll like it i think you'll oh, like i it. will and you know the, the great thing about it is that we were just discussing this everybody expects you not to grow so they expect you to sound like england and john ford coley it doesn't happen. Nobody ever does it once that they leave a group. So, I mean, the, the songs are different. Mm -hmm. When I play, I don't play one style. I play all kinds of styles, jazz, rock, classical. Like I said, I was trained classically. Mm -hmm. um, and the music is always different. When I write, I don't sit down and go, OK, I'm going to write a country song today. What comes out is what comes out. You know, it can be country, it can be pop, it can be rock, and it might have classical overtones to it. It's just whatever it comes out. Wow, Sir John, oh my God. I can't wait to log into your website. I'm going to listen to it all night. <laughs> oh, cool. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, one, one last request. Can we request just a little sample, a cappella sample of uh, It's Sad to Belong? Well, let me see. I wouldn't prepare for that. Well, let's see what we can do here. Let me do it. Um, sad to belong to someone else. The right one comes along. Yes, it's sad to belong to someone else. The right one comes along. That's sad to belong. Thank you, Sir John. Oh, you bet. Thank you. Thank you. you. Any message to your fans? No, it, you're in the Philippines, am I correct? Everybody okay, I'm from the Philippines will watch this. Okay, I'm hoping to come back to the Philippines. I've been there about 35 times. We know. Since, yes, yeah, since 2000. Everybody and, knows uh, you're in the Philippines. <laughs> now, I, I, I love it over there. But I'll tell you what happens. Uh -huh. It's been two years since I've been there uh -huh. because of this pandemic Daddy. nonsense. Uh -huh. The first thing I'm going to do when I get back to the Philippines mm -hmm. is I'm going to run down to Tagatai and I'm going to jump into the original buco pie place. <laughs> and I'm going to get me a buco pie, buco which pie. I really love and miss. <laughs> And then I'm going to go get some turons, and then I'm going to get myself a mango shake. And then I'm going to sit there and go, yeah, now I feel good. Oh, my <laughs> God. You're a Filipino blood now. <laughs> you know well, about I, pie. I, I, tell, I tell everybody Pino Akoi, you know, <laughs> Pino Akoi. And uh, it was really funny because 
I, I did a, a concert in Los Angeles a couple of years ago and they put out another album called Long Way Home, mm -hmm. uh, live in Israel and Los Angeles. Well, uh, there was some Filipinos there and they, they recorded this whole thing, it's live. And so I played a song called Just Tell Me You Love Me yeah. for, for the Filipino audience, oh. because again, nobody really knows it here. And I talked to them in Tagalog. And, and I mean, it was really funny, you know, and I just said, yeah, you know, I know, I know how to speak, uh, you know, Tagalog, uh -huh. like, for Bruto Mungulai, you know. <laughs> my, my reclamica, huh? How's that, you know? So, I mean, and I just, I love messing with them because they call me, um, they call me Puyo, you know, Calvin. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I had so much fun with them because every, the thing that I loved the most is that they would always call me Poe. Po? So, Poe, uh -huh. uh -huh. po. so everything was Salamat Poe, and I'd go, uh -huh. no, John, John, not Poe, John. They'd go, thank you, Poe, no, John, John. And I said, there's some guy running around the Philippines. He must look like me or something because they've mistaken me for him. I, I think his name's Poe because po. everything is... Thank you, Paul. Oh. And I go, no, John. <laughs> oh my God. This is going to be my and teacher. Actually. Them, you know? <laughs> okay, Paul. Oh, I tell you, it, it was so much fun traveling with those guys. I remember one time I was over there, we had a brand new band. And so they didn't know me. And I joke and I laugh all the time. And so we had to get a three o'clock lobby call. Had to be in the lobby to go wherever we were going at three o'clock in the morning. And so this guy comes, I think it was like one of the keyboard players. He walks up and he goes, good morning, Sir John. How are you? Uh -huh. And I looked at him and I said, shut up. <laughs> and he went, I don't, and everybody started laughing, you know, because the people that knew me knew I was joking. And then, I mean, it was really funny because he was like, oh no, what did I do? Did I make him <laughs> Was, no, don't come know. up to me at three o'clock in the morning and go good morning how are you like, shut up leave me alone i want to go to bed so we we laugh a lot when i come over there oh my god well i hope one of these days this pandemic will get over with and we will have a concert in the philippines i hope I so, hope so. I, oh gosh i miss oh, it gosh. i know okay sir john message to entablado viewers entablado tv message to you guys keep doing what you're doing i understand that you help out children on the street god bless you, Thank you. god bless you because the thing is is those poor kids we would see them all the time and i used to talk to them you know just just stop on the street and and give change or whatever and what i did was because again the filipinos have such a high work ethic and i love it and so these kids they want to work Mm -hmm. And so what I would do is I'd say, tell you what, you let me take your picture, I'll give you some some change. And they go, okay, and I go, fine. And I'll just take a picture of them and then and then give them. And it's like you're working. Okay. You're not you're not begging, you're working because you just uh, do a thing. True. So I mean, and I I enjoy being over there. And you guys just keep that up because that's a great need. Thank you. Thank you, sir, Jack. Thank you, Sir John, for your time. Thank you, thank you so much. And I hope we thank will work so soon. I will contact you. Or you're on my Facebook and I will contact you when this pandemic is over. That sounds wonderful. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye. -bye.